Hello and welcome to another tutorial in Maya. Today it's all about rendering something. Uh, let's take a look at how to render just a quick 100 image sequence and essentially here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna bring over my uh, this little movie. I rendered this out it's just a quick uh, demonstration of kind of how to render out an image sequence. As you can see, I have some text and I sort of did some keyframing and replaced it in the middle there. And, you know, it's got some shadows. And I took this into After Effects and then added a background. Uh, nothing special. This is just something to really quickly show you how to get a, a render done. Um, there's all sorts of different ways to do it and rendering can be like super complex or you can make it super simple. So in this case, we're, we're going to stay with super simple just to get you started on um, some sort of rendering. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that for a minute and we'll go in. Here's what I have in my render view. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. And what we want to do is I'm going to render this in Maya software. Maya software is the easiest renderer because essentially there's not that many choices involved in getting a render output. So let's just take the uh, Maya software and do a render output. First of all, what you want to do is call up your render settings. Uh, if you don't have your render settings, just go ahead and click right here and that'll give you your render settings window. And I'm going to render my master layer and I'm going to be using Maya software. And when you call up this um, render setting, you'll get a common tab here. And essentially, this is just the name of my image sequence. And it goes from 001 to 100. So that's the 100 frames of my sequence. And that's, that's cool. It's exactly what we want. Now, up here at the top of the, the, the menu here, you can see I've got mine named Render Time 1. And you can see where that shows up in your file name. Now you could change this to render time two, for example. If I change this to render time two, I'll go ahead and do that. And um, that'll attach it to, to what we're doing there. So now you can see where, now that I clicked out of that box, it says render time two or three or whatever. So image format, I'm gonna go with the standard Maya IFF file. Uh, you can put it at anything you want on here. For the moment, I'm just going to go with a standard IFF. A lot of times you might want to just do a JPEG output or something of that nature, maybe a TIFF output or a Targa. For right now, I'm going to output the Maya IFF. Now the frame and animation, this is the name, underscore, and number, and then, then the, the name. So essentially, um, or IFF, dot IFF, the extension, dot IFF. And I have a frame padding set to three, and that's because I have 100 frames in my sequence. So if you have 400 frames in your sequence, you might want to set your frame padding to four. That would give you up to 999 or 9,999 frames. And then when it kicks over into like say 10,001 frames, you might need a, you know, like a, a frame padding of four or whatnot. So anyway, just be aware that your frame padding gives you those numbers. Um, so I have a frame padding of three. I can have up to 999 frames. So that's the, that's the concept there. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of these other things. One thing that will always trip you up is this frame range. If you don't set this, um, by default, Maya kind of sets it at start frame one and end frame 10. And you almost always have to come in here and set this to the number of frames that you have in your animation. So in this case, I have 100. I'm going to leave 100. But if you have 200, set it to 200. Now, let's come down here and look at what we're going to render. We're going to render my perspective cam because that's what I have chosen down here. And I'm in the perspective view. And I want to leave my alpha mask because that gives me the transparency in the background. And everything that's black back here will, will stay black and transparent, basically, when I composite it. So I'm going to leave that checked like that. Now, let's say I want to add, like, sometimes you have, might have two or three cameras going in a scene. You might have camera one, camera two, camera three, or the top cam, side cam, whatever. What you might want to do is click in here. And I'm going to render my perspective camera, yes, but I also want to add a renderable camera. So if I come down here and click on that and let it highlight and then de-click, it's going to add another camera for me. 
So now it's saying that this renderable camera is the front camera, or I could switch it to the side or the top, but for the right now, I'll just leave it at front. And now I have two cameras that are gonna be uh, rendered, and because I have it named up here, like this, um, it'll add you know it'll add the camera name to the the file name, so you'll know which camera you rendered when you you look at it in your uh, projects folder. Okay, so no big deal there. In this case, I don't really need to render the front camera um, necessarily, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, click this little garbage can over here, and that'll get rid of that camera. So now I can see where the only renderable camera I have is my perspective and it's set at 640 by 480. You can set this size to anything you want and it'll output it to 720, HD 1080. You know, it'll give you an output of, of high res or high def, whatever. In this case, I'm gonna stay with standard definition 640 by 480. So I'm gonna leave it there. And down here, this just automatically defaults to what the screen rate is and whatnot. You can change that at your will, no big deal. And in this case, I'm gonna leave my enable default light on. Okay, so that's all there is to it in this first tab. Um, very simple, very basic, and you know, just gets you started. Now, what I'm gonna do is come over here into my Maya software. And as you can see, quality is the first thing we're looking at. Um, you could do a preview quality, which will kind of be, eh, won't be that great or we can go to production quality. I'm gonna set mine on production quality just to get a pretty good starting point um, by default. And you'll see where it, it sort of has default settings all the way through here when you go to production quality. That's cool. I'm gonna raise my shading quality up to say like 20. And when I do that, you can see where it switches into custom mode. So I've made a, a change to that default setting and I made it you know better, so I'm just basically doing a custom type of quality now. All right, so in here, your multi-pixel filtering, play around with these, um, find out what they do, maybe do a Gaussian blur, and then click on your render view over here and see if that improves things for you. It's gonna be different in every case, and it's really hard to figure out what's going on there, but you know, with everything being different. So in some cases, changing your filter might give you better shadows or it might give you a better reflection. I don't know. I mean, it's voodoo when it comes to, to <laughs> rendering. So that's just something to be aware of. Play around with it all day long. Do some different settings. Maybe switch your, your filter widths here. So anyway, that's what that's all about. Um, I, for the moment, I'm just gonna leave it at triangle filter and I'll just leave the default settings and we'll go from there. Now down here, you have field options, frames, both fields interlay, separate, odd, even. Uh, for the time being, just leave it at frames. That will make a um, render of every single frame. And since I'm doing 24 frames per second, it's gonna basically render every frame at 24 frames per second. And in this case, I'm gonna leave my ray tracing on. You don't necessarily have to have ray tracing. It all depends on what's going on in your scene. But for the moment, I'll just leave mine on. No big deal. Okay, so that's about it. Um, there's not really much more to worry about down here. I have um, a, a tune lines applied, so I'm gonna leave my paint effects strokes there on, and I'm gonna put oversampling on, but you know, if you don't have paint effects in your scene, don't worry about it. You can just leave that off. But that's something to check and always be aware of down there. Okay, so that's it. Um, we are ready to, to render. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move my render settings out of the way and we're gonna take a look at one thing. We're gonna come up here and make sure you're in your rendering menu set. And now what we wanna do is go to render and we wanna batch render. And if you go to this little, um, this little guy right here, you'll see that your only option is to choose all available processors or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that checked and I'm gonna hit batch render. And this is just a warning from my last time I rendered, and I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna cancel the last batch render. So now it is starting to render. And down here in the um, Mel line, you'll see where it's gonna start showing you that you have things rendering. Um, you'll see your frame number here, and you'll see how long it's taking, and you can kind of get a feel for everything um, as it's going along there. So that's kind of cool. But be aware that every now and then, as you're seeing the render line active down here, 
sometimes it hangs up and it doesn't move and it doesn't go anywhere and you think that your render might not still be rendering um, but generally it may come up with a warning up here saying that your batch renders um, unexpectedly quit blah blah and I, it's just a little bug in Maya sometimes you know I'm on a Mac I don't know if it's the same for a PC but you know it, it sometimes says hey we're not we're not rendering anymore so just click that button to say ignore and here's the way to really check um, or a simple way to check I guess I can come into my projects folder where my default images are being sent to from this batch render and I can kind of take a look at this folder and as you can see it's actually adding frames um, there you go so all of these frames are my new frames and that's under my render time 2 um, prefix and it just keeps adding frames so you can kind of monitor it that way there's other ways to monitor it for but for right now this is what we want to do is just leave it there okay so I already rendered this sequence out and you may want to just let your sequence render out and uh, then push pause and pause this video because I'm going to cancel this batch render and then uh, I'm going to import what I just did into After Effects so let's do that for the moment I'm going to go ahead and just sort of minimize my folder there and I think what I might do in in my case I'm going to come back into the render menu and I'm going to cancel that batch render and it says do you wish to cancel current render job I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes okay because I've already rendered it now let's take a look at something really cool I'm gonna pull up um, After Effects right here and you can see where I basically imported an image sequence and made this all of this okay so uh, there's nothing too complicated going on here um, two layers one's my image sequence right here and one is my background which is this cloud like stuff so in the meantime what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete both of these um, down here I'll click and shift click and actually I'm gonna delete this stuff too I'm gonna delete everything right there so boom. so anyway now I'm in After Effects and here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna come in and do go file I'm gonna go to import and I'm gonna go to import file and I'm going to navigate to that image sequence in my Maya folder and I'm going to import that image sequence which essentially is render time so you'll start at the first frame and all you have to do is click on the first frame of your image sequence when you're bringing something into After Effects and you can see where it's importing as footage which is an IFF sequence that's exactly what we want so I'll just hit open and you'll have choices here you can either choose straight unmatted or maybe pre multiplied I usually leave mine here because that seems to work all the time um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit OK now you can see where it popped up here in the window in my project window if I click on that I can go ahead and click hold drag it over drop it in and there it is so if I scrub through the timeline down here you'll notice that it, it does uh, what it's supposed to do so it's an image sequence and I'm going to I'm gonna output this but first what we'll do is gonna leave that there for a second I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit um, I'm gonna go basically add a layer here so in the background I can go to layer new and then solid this will just give me a default blue solid that I have set up I'm gonna hit OK I'm going to drag and drop my fog lights on the top there and now I can see where it's in the foremost layer on the top but what I want to do is bring that down below there and as you can see when I brought that layer behind there we still have that transparency and we can see what what happened so so there you go so that's that's a quick and easy way to bring it into After Effects and output it and um, you know sort of do that whole thing so now when it, when it's ready to render when you want to get it out of After Effects basically you'll just have to come up here into composition and go to make movie send it to your desktop alright so there you have it and I'm glad you watched uh, read a book every day and thanks for watching <laughs> Bye.